Welcome to our lecture online. Sometimes the types of problems you're asked to simplify look a little bit different. We still use the same general principle in rationalize the denominator, but what do you do when you have the cube root of x in the denominator instead of the square root of x? Well, we want to change them in such a way that we end up with a, something cubed underneath that cube root symbol. So, in other words, we're going to rationalize the denominators by doing the following. You're going to write this as 4 over the cube root of x and leave some space there, plus 7 over the cube root of x. And now, what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the cube root of x squared, the cube root of x squared. Now, notice when you multiply these together, you end up with the cube root of x cubed, and of course that means you have rationalized the denominator. We're going to do the same over here. The cube root of x squared divided by the cube root of x squared. Same reason. You can then get a denominator with simply x instead of something underneath a cube root symbol. So this is equal to 4 times the cube root of x squared over, well that would be the cube root of x cubed, and then plus 7 times the cube root of x squared divided by the cube root of x cubed. Now you don't have to write this intermediate step, I'm just doing it to illustrate it, but right away you realize in the denominator you just get an x, so this is equal to 4 times the cube root of x squared over x plus 7 times the cube root of x squared over x, and essentially, you can think of it as follows. This is equal to 4 over x times the cube root of x squared plus 7 over x times the cube root of x squared. And notice you can simply add that together. 4 over x plus 7 over x, since the denominators are the same, that is simply equal to 11 over x times the cube root of x squared. And that would then be the final simplified form. Can you just add it first and then do all the regular form? Do the same thing over there, shouldn't you just say 11 over that radical and then multiply it by cube root x squared? You mean what you want me to do is just go 4 plus 7 is 11 over this? You could. Um, it's the technique. I think you always want to follow this technique. It's the same denominator. You could just show it. I think you should show it, personally speaking. Okay. All right. Okay. I think so. Okay. Uh, okay. What you could also do is the following thing. And so let's put a line here. The line here, we're going to rewrite this problem. So we have 4 over the cube root of x plus 7 over the cube root of x. And here, you can look at that and realize since the denominators are the same, you can add the numerators. That rule still holds true even though the denominator looks as weird as the cube root of x. They're the same, which means you can add the numerators. So this becomes 4 plus 7 over the cube root of x, which is equal to 11 over the cube root of x. And then you realize you don't want to leave a radical in the denominator, then you're going to rationalize the denominator by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the cube root of x squared. And when you do that, in the numerator, you end up with 11 times the cube root of x squared divided by, in the denominator, you end up with the cube root of x cubed. And then, of course, you realize that that simply becomes x in the denominator. So this is equal to 11 times the cube root of x squared divided by x. And yes, indeed, you'll get the very same result. Again, either way is a perfectly fine way to do the problem. Typically, you just immediately begin to rationalize the denominators, but you can realize that you can actually do it a little bit faster by simply adding the numerators since the denominators are the same. And then in this particular example, here, again, there's different ways in which you can approach it, but first, 
that's our crazy cat again, that once in a while just starts complaining like that. Just have to let her be. At this point, she's about 18 or 19 years old. We're not going to change her anymore. There it is. It sounds pathetic, doesn't it? But be assured, she's just fine. All right, continue with this. So we're going to write this over a common denominator. So this could be written as 5 over the square root of x minus 1 times the square root of x divided by the square root of x. So what I've done is I multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of x so I could have similar denominators. Now I can write all that over a common denominator. So this is equal to 5 minus the square root of x divided by the square root of x. Now I still want to get rid of that denominator. Uh, I want to rationalize the denominator. So what I'm going to do here is multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of x. So when I do that, I get the following. I get 5 minus the square root of x times the square root of x in the numerator divided by the square root of x times the square root of x, which is simply x. And then I just have to multiply this out. So this becomes 5 times the square root of x minus the square root of x times the square root of x is simply x all divided by x. And essentially, if I don't want to, if I don't want to divide that into the numerator, I could potentially write it as 5 times the square root of x over x minus 1. So either way, I get the same answer. And of course, I could have done that immediately in that one as well. But either way, you get a simplified form where you don't have a radical in the denominator. And that is how it's done.